Yeah. Talking sauce episode 91. The big 9 1. The big 9 1. It's a milestone. It's a milestone. It's the... nine away. Everyone's it's like 91, the third nine milestone. away from 100, <clears throat> eight away from 99. 100 minus 9 is 91. Here we are. Shouts out to Wayne Gretzky. Dude. Why six afraid? Seven because seven, eight, nine. Mm. Bush did 91. Bush did 91. <laughs> that. <laughs> how y'all, how you guys been? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Doing well. We went out to, um, I had kind of a wild thing. Wild. Happened this weekend. We went out. Have you been to He's Not? He's Not Here, the like bar in UNC? I, uh, I think I know what you're talking they, about. They have, like, that yeah, yeah, famous, like, the cup thing. Yeah, they have that. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but so uh, inside, but. I went there. It's, you know, real small indoor area, big outdoor area. So we were standing outside. And um, this hanging out with some friends, this guy comes up, real drunk, starts hitting on one of my girlfriend's yeah. friends. He, uh, I thought you were going to say one of your girlfriends. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> one of my many girlfriends. <laughs> a lot of things about you I don't know. <laughs> but so this guy comes up, starts hitting on one of my girlfriend's friends. And... Uh, she goes like, hey, this is my boyfriend to this other girl's friend who is there. Not a boyfriend, but, you know, just like politely get, get away from me. Right. Yeah. And uh, but and so for the purpose of this story, this guy is Asian just and you'll see why it's important in a little bit. But okay. So this guy goes the guy hitting on or the guy the, who's the passing is the boyfriend passing is the boyfriend. Okay. He's Asian. Um, and so the guy's like, oh, shit, bro, like real drugs, like, bro, my bad is like shaking my hand, this dude's hand, like every he every dude at the table, hand. he's like trying to be all like cordial and shit. He's like, but I'm just saying, bro, like you know, like congratulations, dude, like your girl's hot, and all this stuff, and all this is happening. And then he just goes, but yeah, man, you know, I'm gonna get out of your hair and stuff, and then just, then just hands together, bows, and walks the fuck off. And we were all just like, did he just bow? Like. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it was just I, just I couldn't believe it was just Amazing. the whole thing was so funny. What's your what's your boy's name? They, uh, they, they Peter. 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 How did Peter feel about that? He he like didn't even really catch it. My girlfriend, who's also Asian, was like, "Did he just fucking bow?" Like, <laughs> God damn, man. Yeah, no, it was uh, it was crazy. But shouts out to Peter. Maybe he bows everywhere he goes. Hope you gotta hope. You know, you know what I mean. <laughs> you no. got, he doesn't, but yeah, maybe only does. when he orders at Asian yeah, restaurants. Yeah, yeah. He's just like, thank you and bows. Dude, just the part where he said he shook every dude's hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Because yeah. I know y'all motherfuckers were like like five to right. one on the ratio. Right. Ladies, too, it was so. actually just like three of us. It was a three, like three and three. Like the ratio okay. was perfect. And okay. so like this guy even coming up, like that's a ballsy move to begin with. Like if it's three and three, yeah, you gotta not, assume yeah. it's all paired up oh, there. Oh yeah, right? no, that's just yeah, that's a, it's a numbers game. Exactly yeah, off, off rip, and he's not he's not doing the numbers. He's not doing the numbers. He dude. miscounted the men. Yeah, <laughs> that's it was, hilarious. It was so fucking man. funny. Why well, he but, probably took you as like the gay friend. Well, definitely, dude. I would have. That that was just because of the outfit I was wearing, though. It well, was, exactly. It was all assless chaps. I was, it was like uh, see through mesh. <laughs> see through mesh and assless chaps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a good time. Your nipples were pierced. Well, you know, it's you know, yeah, it feels pleasure. good, dude. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Good. Like, yeah, <laughs> it feels good. Um, it's not for me. It's for my girlfriend. Right. <laughs> but what about y'all, man? Anything fun and? Not racist happened. This, uh, well, watched, definitely uh, not racist. Stuff. I was able to, I was able to like, check that off. Most racist, everything that happened that was not racist. In my, <laughs> um, watched you know, New Man Lorian. White, you know. <laughs> yeah. it's a little racist just being that, but you know. You watched the what? Newest Mandalorian. What is that? Man, if only you knew. <laughs> yeah, see, the problem is, is you're too busy out here fucking inciting hate <laughs> yeah. violence and shit like that. And <laughs> you're out here race baiting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're here trying oh, to talk fun. about fucking quality television. I Not, know. So yeah, Mando's, Mando's been on point. We can't spoil any of it because Jacob hasn't seen it and we don't want to spoil it for him because for some I don't know why, but we're, we're going to do He that. deserves it. I guess. Um, but if you haven't watched it, watch it. It's really good. They haven't been hyping it as much as they should have. Uh, especially if you're just like a fan of the whole general like Star Wars story arc. Like this this is doing Wonders. justice. Yeah. I mean, is it making up for the movies? Well, we're, let's just settle down. Like, <laughs> there, there's a few seasons that we'll have to continue on before we can start having that conversation. Mm-hmm. But it's... Uh, it's t- it's making c- it, the continuity starting to tie together because oh, yeah. keep in mind this takes place after the Empire mm-hmm. films before the uh, first, first order. order. So mm-hmm. you know, um, 
as far as that goes, chronologically, some sort of aha moment mm -hmm. needs to take place. Well, here's my promise to the fans. Fuck you guys. I'll watch it before the next episode. Before the next episode of our podcast. And then we can talk about it, dude. All right. Are they still putting out an episode uh, this Every Friday? Friday? Every Friday. But yeah. even Friday. with the Thanksgiving weekend happening? Oh, probably. Think? Maybe. They'd say they hadn't. There you go. And they've been coming out. I think they, <clears throat> I think they air them like fucking like with Midnight Friday. So yeah, it pops them. up immediate. I, I've been watching like on Saturdays, though. That's what I need to do Saturday mornings. It's when you start. That's when I watched this last one, yeah. The cup of um, coffee. Exactly. Um, it's great. Cup of coffee. Yeah, dude, this coffee's hitting right now. Well, uh, speaking of Thanksgiving, man, y'all y'all getting 300, 400 people together and <laughs> nope. into a small house. and Not really traveling. Eating everything by so your hands. Local, small, little dinner. Immediate family. Yep. Good shit, man. That's what you got to do right now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because, I mean, besides... That's what you got to do in general, right? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, fuck your families. <laughs> well, like, you know, most people got some old people in their family. Mm -hmm. Those are the people, high-risk potential. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get them sick. Definitely. So. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? I'm good. If I can't see my grandma, you can't see your fucking grandma. All right? <laughs> We're all going to suffer. Fuck, I logged out. Fuck, dude. Damn, dude. It is what it is. You're grinding. It's cold. You weren't mining. I told you to mine. Is the music DMCA! Playing? DMCA! Yeah, just kidding. <laughs> but you do anything big, Dylan? I know. I mean, it's. Well, we were, on that note, we were going to go see uh, Dakota's grandparents down in Florida, but Dakota kind of decided the other night that that wasn't the best idea. Right. Right. So we're just going to take. If you don't have it, you're definitely catching it on your way through Florida. It Florida <laughs> too, so. so we're just going to kind of, we're still going to take a little trip, just. Do some to ourselves. I think yeah, she said some beach down in South Carolina she hasn't been to in a while. So nice, dude. Word. Do that. Time. See mom on the way. Hell yeah. Word. Yee. Cool. Hell yeah. So uh, with it being episode 91, we got a shout out. Player Warware, the number 91. 9191. Easy. This is an easy one. Pretty fucking easy. Sergei Fedorov, the second best Russian-born player to ever play in the NHL. <laughs> I mean, literally, statistically. As everyone says. I'm pretty sure Ovechkin already shattered his records. Not shattered, but I think he's passed. Him. Probably. I think he has. I think probably. he's passed most of them. I'm not sure. Probably not for mm -hmm. assists. And then a quick, you know, honorable mention to Stamkos, Tavares, and Tarasenko. There you go. Um, big, big, big honorable mentions to those three. Um, but yeah, no, Sergey Fedorov, dude. First Russian player to hit 1,000 points. I mean, you know, that, that right there, like, just on some GOAT status, yeah. you know, can cement you as the greatest, if not one of the greatest Russian-born players to ever do it. Um, yeah, he's a GM for a KHL team out there in the KHL. Mm -hmm. um, the one he played for coming up through the KHL. Yeah. Goes drafted out of there, CSKA Moscow, ends up going back there and GMs him, dude. You know, do you think, full like, story arc. Exactly. And, you know, do you think... He could ever have had that position if he wasn't great? No. No. <laughs> I don't know what his GM works, style that's is. That's not how it works in Russia. No. <laughs> he definitely has that GM position because. It works like that here too, low key. You know what I'm saying? Mm, yeah. All that shit. But uh, you also got like, to be good at your job. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't notice you log back in. <laughs> yeah, log back. Got to grind. Got to grind. Check that inventory. But um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, and then kind of an interesting tied in with the with us here in North Carolina back in like two thousand two thousand one. I think the season before, yeah, two thousand two thousand one. The Hurricanes tried to offer sheet Fedorov with at the time it was a really big money deal. I think it was like six years for thirty eight million, huge signing bonus. <clears throat> and as I was kind of reading up on it before the podcast, it all started with some beef. Between Carmanos and Illich. I, I never knew any of this. I didn't know it either, literally until this morning, but I guess way back in, you know, their younger days, Carmanos was owned a uh, major junior team that was playing in Joe Lewis Arena, which obviously the Red Wings and Illich were also playing in. They got evicted. He had to move out, move the team to the suburbs, kind of, I'm sure, killed the fan base and everything. A big part of that being in the city. And so Carmanos never really forgives him for that. When he ends up buying the rights to the Whalers, he wants to move them to Detroit. Dumb. Uh, which I yeah I don't make any sense. I don't know why we want to do that. Just like keep him in heart. Detroit in original six. Yeah. Like forget about it. Yeah. And so that uh, Illich and the league kind of work together, and they're like, that ain't happening. So yeah. Carmanos is even more pissed. And so when Fedorov comes up, he tries to offer sheet him. There's some shit about how it was worded where. Because the Red Wings were better and they were going to make the conference finals, uh, whoever signed the deal would have to pay out a huge chunk of money in one year versus spreading that chunk of money out over four years. League ends up rejecting it. 
Fedorov continues to play for the Red Wings. 2001-2002, Red Wings beat us for a Stanley Cup. And so it's just kind of like <laughs> Karmanos has lost to Illich every step of the way, dude. That's like every his, step of the way. That's his arch nemesis. He's is the, Illich still the owner of the Red Wings? That is a good question. Dude. I'm not sure. I guess my point is, is uh, Karmanos is not a <clears throat> owner anymore himself. No, he's not. You know, a minority. Well, he's not he's ma- a minority. Yeah, owner. majority owner anyway. Not the yeah, face dude, of the team. Don't get the, the Hurricanes owner. fans started, bro. <laughs> I, I refuse to get them started. But it's kind of cra- crazy full circle, this full anime story arc there, dude. For sure. There's enemies. In Federer, there's Stanley Cups. I mean, what a gem to watch play. Mm-hmm. So, so good. Amazing shot. Yeah. Nasty hands. Um, you know, he'll get back on forecheck, mm-hmm. too. Um, great player. Definitely. And if Cody. it weren't for the fact that he played at the same time as Wayne Gretzky, there's a couple years there where he probably would have been the unquestioned best player in the league, but yeah. you're playing with the, you know... I'm pretty sure he had a couple, like, greatest of all time seasons. Oh, yeah, a couple 120-point seasons on, like, mm-hmm. on top of that. I mean, just mm-hmm. absolute monster, dude. Shouts that out. That story about the offer sheet of the Hurricanes is just wild. For real. Yeah. I just, because, like, I was reading up, just, you know, double-checking the facts, pre-production stuff for the we podcast. We actually do some research. Every now and okay. again. And it just comes up, like, oh, and he was offer sheeted by the Hurricanes back in 2001 or whatever. And it was a whole fuck around. It was a whole thing. And there was like, like wow. and there was hate. People's wives were traded. That's not true. But we can throw They're it offered. out there. Yeah. <laughs> <They're offered. laughs> Part of the offer sheet. Shouts out, Sergey Fedorov. <laughs> Carolina. Carolina, dude. What you know about it? You know so about the about it? Uh, Greenville Swamp Rabbits, am I correct? Bruh. They have gone... Uh. They've repartnered with the uh, Charlotte Checkers, who are now affiliated Bruh. with Florida. So all within a season, this whole one Carolina push that was the whole marketing push behind that. Bye. But we're the only Carolina now. We're the only – everyone else is down with the Florida team. Yeah. It's just – What a sick promo video for that. Yeah. That was, that was a fire really promo video. It was um, really dope. Yeah, shouts out to whoever put that together. Um, I mean, dude, the Hurricanes marketing team, you got to be bummed, right? I mean, that's just such an easy – it's just such an easy well to go back to. It's just the well, yeah. one Carolina. We're all here. And, and using it, well, yeah, and using that same pitch to pull fans who don't go to games. Yeah. The whole Carolina thing. For real. Um, Especially, you know, like, hey, yeah. you know, you might not be able to come to the big city, Raleigh. Go out to the small city, Charlotte, and <laughs> check Bigger out city. A, yeah, yeah. <laughs> check out our AHL team. Right. Um, yeah, now you got to go to Chicago. So where where's do we get another ECHL affiliate? Are they even required? I feel like they're not required. They're probably not required. I am, I am pretty sure that the ECHL has a number of teams that aren't even participating. I'm sure. I think that's that was a recently announced. I think they um, probably cannot. Due to financial yeah, they probably cannot operate without fans. Right. You know, they don't get TV money. They don't get big ad money. Yeah. Um, so donate to any relief funds if you uh, feel so compelled because they those exist. Definitely for those players. Um, that's what they you know a lot of them. That's how they try to live by. On and some more hurricane stuff. Did y'all hear or see that apparently there's still a possibility that Battenin would resign with us? Why? That's what I'm saying. I don't unless it would be on there's some like some trade we're planning to make if we're doing that's that. That's what I'm saying. Unless it's on some like eight hundred thousand dollar shit, like why would he ever take that? Right. Besides maybe to boost the stat line. But even then, there's I don't know, something you're we not don't gonna know. play that much time, I you're feel not. like, you know. Like you're if Pesci's not. back and we got Hamilton, you know, I mean, we, what are we doing? In this yeah. case, there's such thing as too many assets. Yeah. There just really is. It's a yeah, waste of money. Yeah, I don't see There's no way he's going to sign for anything less than three. That's what I'm saying. You know, if you're talking multi-year, there's no yeah. way he's sign for anything less than four. Yeah. At, at his supposed skill set. We can't afford that at all. You know, like you're saying unless there's a big we trade with like, a you know, moving out like a Gardner or yeah. a, a Brady Shea, then. Or if like it's some weird situation where like a team wants to sign him, but they can't afford to offer him that money so they know they want to trade us a similar paid asset so we sign them and then trade for that asset yeah sign them pay them like, like a, a signing or whatever. bonus or whatever yeah some shit you know so that's that's the only the reason cat pit, not the cash and they obviously wouldn't just reveal that yeah and trade goes bad yeah Fans unless you ask dubis in which case we reveal everything mm. well i think dubis has the see yeah i was thinking about that like dubis has the uh the ability to just like well yeah like there's 800 stories about me going after every player. So, like, you know, <laughs> like, it's all, it's all hocus pocus. Yeah. Like, anything <laughs> is a possibility in that media market. Yeah. So, like, it's true. Everything. He can you never know what's true, you know? Mm-hmm. He could say it and, like, it could just all be bullshit. 
So I think our producer just quit. He just said fuck. I think our producer just quit suck. the whole thing. He's out. We got to get a camera on him, dude. Hold him. I don't know if we talked about this on the scrum or not, but they uh, they put out more video of the the fucking weight competition center. Did we talk yeah, about that we haven't time? talked about it. So dope, amazing yeah, architecture awesome. on the inside. They did a great job on yeah. that layout. This really, is really impressive. A really nice like fan. Fan centric yeah. uh, thought to it. It seems you know get fans out to the practices and cool way to you know break that barrier between team make you and fan come, base. Make you want to come to practice um, yeah. and help you know facilitate youth hockey. Yeah, and I'm sure there's gonna be all sorts of cool little tournaments going on there and shit. Too. What were you smiling at a bit ago? Uh, with Dylan popping oh, his can in, into the microphone. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say something else. No. What are you laughing at? Yeah, what are you laughing at, dude? I'll tell you later. Um, Yeah, no, it's awesome, man. We got to get out there, you know, get our uh, YMCA membership popping at the weight competition center, dude. Do you think the Y will be hosted there? No, but like that, you just mean like as a metaphor. Yeah, just get a membership. You know what I mean? Just is that how that works? uh, Yeah, we'll see. You know, I just want to hit the rink every now and again. I want to skate. (laughs) Can I? I, Can I skate with the Hurricanes? Please. Uh, I'll stay away from everybody. I just like to share the ice. You know, (laughs) get get some pointers. I think I could lock down Spatch. Dude, that's what I'm trying to get at. Give me a chance on defense. I just gotta get off this practice topic. (laughs) (laughs) Talking about practice. Yeah. Talking about practice. We're talking about practice. We're talking about practice. Um, shouts out, <laughs> shouts out, Carolina. Uh, yo, what in the fuck? Okay. Okay. Do we didn't talk about the retro jerseys? Nope. Did we not go through nope. them. No, no, no. We we told everyone we we're saving it? it for the pod. Dude, what in the fuck was this? What was this whole campaign? I don't know. Like, there seems to be so little, besides a couple, which we'll get into, there seems to be so little hype around the whole, not even that much push from the NHL itself. They're just like, here's a jersey. Also, think about how lame it's going to be, like, on the night of when the teams wear them on the ice. Like, they're going to do, like, the reveal for that night. Like, the team comes out, promo video, whatever, but, like, there's no fans. No fans. It's just At least, you know, possibly. So... Who's going to react to it live? It's going to take more away from it, right? It's already a lame thing. Maybe that's why they're just hoping. Maybe like, that's why it is so lame because it can only be so cool without people. I yeah, I, I, I mean, you might get some, you know, social media fanfare, but the mo- for most of these fucking jerseys, like, we'll just get into it. Do the New York Islanders? What was that? They just swapped some colors. They, they just submitted their jerseys. They should have <laughs> with the Fisherman one. Dude, they, that's the thing. They had so many. I feel like they had you so many those, cool options. Those beanies and shit they put out for that logo. They, no, they put out like a a, a series of like clo- clothing uh, with that old logo with like this like neon blue and orange and green like it was it's fu- like it's why right the there. fuck wasn't that it's it? Ju- it's just right there. And they just like nah, it's so bad. They just submitted the, the wrong Rangers image is file. Trash. The Rangers, the Rangers long sleeve t shirt. That's yeah. what theirs is. The Red Wings practice Re- jersey. Practice, dude. It's like they're just like we're gonna make a white jersey and the we're Whalers, just gonna fucking put Detroit. A lot of on people it. fuck with the Whalers one, and I think it just gets those like. Bonus points for being the Whalers. Naturally yeah. sick logo, naturally sick colors. It's the jersey itself is so boring. It's that's, just the Whalers jersey with gray, like that's off white gray. And like you, you were saying, you didn't even notice that I it was notice. gray Someone at had first. To tell me. Like it's in, so bland. I think it's important a couple extra to note, green stripes or something. And I think it's important to note, like, because I, I feel like I've seen a lot of this opinion out of the Hurricanes fan base that we're not saying that their heart for jersey's bad. Like, the Whalers jersey in its, like, by itself is a sick jersey. Yeah. It's just for this whole thing, like, why not make it blue? They've got that navy blue. I'm pretty sure they've done that, be- like, before in the Whalers history to have, like, that navy blue, dark yeah. blue yeah. alternate, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it fucking blue. Anything. And just, like, just gray, and it's going to be the heart for jersey again. They're just going to bleed this shit dry. It's like, let it, it just let shows it be a, a lack cool of, thing. It just shows a lack of effort and creativity when there's a lot more potential to be explored. I mean, definitely. Well, uh, yeah. Definitely. I mean, the Capitals tried something. They're not my favorites either. They but did try. They, and, and a lot of people fuck with them. I, they, didn't, I don't really like them. I did see them when I saw them on Tom Wilson. That kind of changed my mind. <laughs> I could be just, anything, though. You, know, oh, you see anything on I Tom Wilson. I prefer to see less on them, to be honest. But, <laughs> uh, you know, it, yeah, the, those are pretty unimpressive as a whole as well. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, especially now with the whole pandemic, we're not in the fucking, we're about to be back at the, the heydays of the of social distancing and sheltering in place with the next wave coming through here. But, you know, people's creative juices should be at an all-time high. 
You would think. You can't, you, can't, you can't be out doing shit. These creative motherfuckers should be. I don't know, but I guess, but like six, seven months of it, at some point, you're probably like, fuck, just man. Try you're, out. Yeah, you're just like, all I like, this is all I've been doing. And now it's just like, this is all I can do. That's true. Yeah, but you, you know? also got to think they've had how long to prepare. That's true. We've only known about forever. These. Yeah, you know, I mean, this they retro took that, thing. They took that long to go. The Red Wings took they took that long. <laughs> that long. Did you think like they were the first ones? Like they had like you know they announced like all right the first guy to finish the test. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like oh this is sick man this, this is dope so dumb. Yeah. So the Blue Jackets. The St. Louis I was gonna say St. Louis Blues looks like an old school McDonald's uniform. But I used to rock those colors. I mean, yeah, that's their that was their shit. Yeah, uh, L. A. with the Lakers colors. I mean that's always gonna be a hit just because it's Lakers colors and it's, it's L. A. Yeah, it's Max. Everyone hated on Winnipeg. Did you? Not a fan. <clears throat> not a fan. It's bland. Yeah, it is bland. I it's guess not like bad. It's just bland. just bland. Yeah, with the gray on gray. I thought Vancouver. I thought theirs was really cool. Yep. Didn't they? Um, the green. Well, yeah, and they they did the Nordiques thing, right? Am I? Oh, that's Colorado. Colorado. That's Colorado. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Canucks, Colorado. You you know what I'm saying? I feel you. But the yeah, the faded blue and green. Mm-hmm. I think on Vancouver looks really sick. I really like Minnesota's. Yes, I like the, I like the gold with the with the green. That yeah, lighter green. Really, it, it looks, looks really nice. Looks, and that was something looks very I was clean. I was saying for a team that kind of, as an example of a team that doesn't have a lot of like, a lot of jerseys to choose from, kind of yeah, like yeah, the yeah. Hurricanes. They did something. Relatively Interesting. New franchise. Yeah, they brought it. Yeah, you yeah. said that gold yellow looks really cool. Just a different, just a bit of a different look. Not a new franchise, but you know the brand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah North stars. And, yeah. And, yeah. And then, like we were saying, Colorado with the Nordiques yeah. looks fucking sick. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing. Again, it's not the Hurricanes can't go back to their. A lot of other teams did it. It's just they just didn't do anything with lame it. Lame execution. Like they didn't do anything super cool with it. They didn't really incorporate. They didn't like uh, with how Colorado did the Nordiques mixed with the Avalanche right. thing. Like maybe we attempt a Hurricanes Hartford little spin together. Yeah, but I think we can all admit the one that takes the cake, dude. Arizona. Arizona's Arizona by far. They took it. They took a chance, bro. That purple with like the desert. It's like a fucking landscape on the bottom. Yeah. The Nasty. Kachina logo is I think um, probably my favorite logo in hockey. Truthfully, it's fucking. Besides the old school Ducks logo, that's pretty sick. Which is another one I thought was like I, like I was hit or miss with it at first, but the more I look at it, the more my like, eye. Ah, it's dope. It's dude. dope, but like it's also the most wasted potential. You of, think of any? Like like the, it's not a bust, but it's the most wasted potential. You think so? Yeah, like I, I just feel like they could have done. A little bit more. Mm-hmm. Like they like they took the best color scheme and the coolest logo, and then they kind of went like a subtle approach with it. I see. You know what I, I mean? See. Like the where they should have done more of what like what I think what the what we're saying Arizona did. Just go just like go a little wild. Let's over. fucking yeah. do it, son. They just have like because it's just like all white with like the fucking duck like in the corner. Yeah. So the duck like, placement's a little. It's just kind of weird. The duck placement's yeah. a little funny. It just seems disproportional. But sick though. Definitely sick. Yeah. Still. Is sick. there any other? Any other definitive big ones? None that I can think so of. So Columbus, I wasn't Columbus? huge. I wasn't, I wasn't huge on it. They went similar, red. Similar to the Capitals. Red. A lot of people fucking just did like what St. Louis did the red thing. The Columbus did the red thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You know, it was okay. I don't really like that Columbus logo either. That I'm, I'm not too with, fond of it. Like you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I know you're talking yeah, about yeah. With, like the stars and the beast. Yeah, and whatever it is. Yeah, it is. Looks like a Bojangles logo. Pittsburgh's was okay. It does look like a fucking boat. <laughs> Pittsburgh, did they go side pits, sideways Pittsburgh? I think so, yeah. Yeah, whatever. You know what I'm saying, Old dude. school. Fuck yeah, taking it from the Hurricanes, dude. The, the diagonal pants. lettering, dude. We yeah. started that. Straight <laughs> Never been done in hockey Rangers. before. <laughs> Straight gang from them. Um, yeah. Retro, bro. Number uh, top 20 fucking centers in the NHL right now. We talked about the wingers and the defensemen. Yep. Per the network and the fans. We got a list of the top 20 centers According to the NHL Network, just the network, just the network. Fuck the fans, like the NHL would say. Now we'll start at number twenty with Anze Kopitar. Nineteen, Matt Barzal, Barzal. Eighteen, Sean Couturier. Seventeen, Steven Stamkos. Sixteen, Elias Pettersson. Fifteen, Ryan O'Reilly. Fourteen, John Tavares. Thirteen, Sebastian Ajo. Twelve, Mark Scheifele. Eleven, Alexander Barkov. 10, Mike Z- Mika, Z- J- B- B- Mika Zabinijad. 9, Braden Point. 8, Evgeny Malkin. 7, Patrice Bergeron. 6, Jack Eichel. 5, Austin Matthews. 
four, Sidney Crosby, three, Leon Dreisaitl, two, Nathan McKinnon, number one, Connor McDavid. And Edmonton can't get out of the first round. But <laughs> Neither can Toronto. Yeah. Or the second, but it's the first, I mean, the first thing to stand out to me would just be Anze Kopitar still being on the list. Like, no disrespect to him, but is he still a top 20 center I think in the when NHL? You look at face-offs and, you know, defensive presence. You would say so? Back-checking. Yeah. Is it weird to see Steven Stamkos in there? Just, I guess... Really, is this list a well, let's look, this year thing? I guess I that's think, one thing I, I don't know. I think, I think, no, I, I, I treat those lists as like just the currently, best, yeah, yeah, yeah. the okay. best based okay. on what they've done in their careers. Yeah, and yeah, I think that's that's why. That's why you see all the the top guys mm-hmm. that you would think like when we talk about the wingers, you got your Marshes. I mean, they all do great statistically that year, but I think you know the longevity the, of these. Yeah. Superstars has a lot to do with taking it. the career to this point. Look at Barkov, for example, yeah. being almost in the top ten. It's because everyone low key fears him. Yeah, in terms of his the most underrated player skill. in the league. Uh, but uh, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Because um, no one knows who he is. It's was a I joke. Gonna, I forgot what I was going to say to that to the list. You go ahead. Um, was it about Kopitar, Stamkos? Oh, Stamkos. Well, yeah, dude. Like, I mean, the fucking guy. Jumped on the ice during the Stanley Cup Finals with a with a ankle that wasn't working. Yeah, and just ripped a shot. Scored a goal. It was like I'm out. Yeah, y'all. The fuck like, out I contributed like, to this cup, and that's all I else, needed mentally. Who else is capable? Yeah, you I mean, know he's he's, he's in the top twenty. Just absolute of that monster. Alone. It is kind of interesting to see all the teams with. I mean, more a than lot, one. I was gonna say, yeah, a lot of these teams we are two guys: Malkin and Crosby, Drysidle and uh, McDavid, and then Stamkos, Ryan and, uh, O'Reilly, and Jackie Boy. Oh, yeah. He's back in Buffalo, is I, he not? I'm, is he? Is he, he the they whole they thing? have him on blues. We just fucking shout him out, you goof. I know, but they still have him on blues. Team Zion. He is St. Louis Blues, yeah. He's on the blues still? He's on the blues, I man. He was on the blues, was ever. No, man, you crazy, man. You, you crazy, man. You crazy. We said that on the scrum of the podcast last time. We did. Sabres. I thought he was back on the Sabres. Nope. You're capping. Nope. Whatever. <laughs> But yeah, I mean Braden Point and Stamkos, like it's just it's a lot of a lot of dudes doubled up there, man. Yeah. And like we said, McDavid of, obviously of, won. Uh experts would say, you know, that's what it takes yeah. to have a Stanley Cup caliber team. Yeah. I.e. your fucking Stanley Cup champion, Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah. They're up there. Yeah. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. <laughs> you just, did you say uh Krejci and Bergeron? No. Uh, Is Krejci no, not no. on this list? No, I don't think so. Krejci should probably be on this list. You think so? David Krejci should probably be on this list. He should probably hmm. he should probably be on this list, and it should probably replace Jack Eichel. Like like like, at, like, like not like at six, but, but just J- in Jack Jack Eichel comes off this fucking list. I don't know why he's at six. <laughs> to be honest, yeah, I mean he's real. I think he's really good. He's amazingly good. I feel like ah, he's really fucking. good. He's really good. He's really good. Is he six? He doesn't. He doesn't come off the list. Six might be a little high for Six him. Six is really high. I think for he's him. really good. I guess what I'm saying is is all the reasons that Anze Kopitar is on this list are none of the reasons that Jack Eichel's on this list. <laughs> Same reasons that I would put Krejci, Bergeron, Sean Couturier of anyone else that's on this list being a top twenty center are almost almost none of the reasons why Jack Eichel's on this list. Jack <laughs> Eichel's on this list for the same reason that uh, Claude Giroux's on the wingers list. It's just like what do we like he's just a good hockey player. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. They, they are going to find a way to put Giroux on a list, though. They, 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 they'll, they'll, I think I think Claude Giroux is a top twenty center in the NHL. I don't know if he is anymore. Just uh, if he played it. That's true. I mean, they, yeah, they have him mean? on the like, What the fuck? What, what's sure. going on? Like, what's going on? He's nasty at faceoffs. For sure. Why isn't Jordan? Any tips on this pucks list? in? <laughs> Yo, if Kopitar's on this list, I want to see Jordan Stahl on this list. And I see Andre Kopitar. All right, he's on this list because he's like a faster Jordan Stahl right now. And definitely more offensively gifted. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> absolutely. But overall, yeah, I you know agree with this list. Uh, on the topic of lists, give me a quick second to pull it up. They've also put out their uh, top goalies. I think They're, McKinnon's better than McDavid. Really? Just better? You think he... Like, like overall, like overall skill... Maybe not skill, just like overall talent at hockey. You think he's better? Yeah, I think he's stronger. 
Like, he can do everything McDavid can, not as quickly, but he can do it, and he's stronger. In a one-on-one battle, McKinnon's putting McDavid on his ass if they if they come in contact. If they come in contact, that would be the thing, man. I, f- I really feel he, like he Connor McDavid has a him. different gear. I really do. He does, dude. but so does McKinnon. He does. You know McKinnon does. No, he does, but it's... I think McKinnon's logged better. Out, logged out of RuneScape. Shit. Stew on it. He's better. But, um... Oh, dude, that... I oh man like like what do you say like in a foot race yeah McDavid's probably gonna win he's got oh uh, so like I don't know man McDavid's so fucking good like McD- and I'm a huge 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 uh, Nathan McKinnon fan I love Nathan McKinnon but like he's probably like I, if I had McKinnon to has a better guy, shot does he though yeah like he does he does like, like he does okay like, like okay he, okay. Fu- he, okay. he does he can rip shots okay better shot. Not better hands, but he's got nasty hands. Yeah, they're built like he's this. Not I mean, faster. They, they, no one say anytime we say someone's better than the other, we're not saying the other one's bad at really anything. Of course, you know what I'm saying? of course. But that's for like the fans or anyone right, like right, right, listening, right. Yeah, the yeah, listeners. Yeah. Um, I, th- I think I think Mc- McKinnon's going to be more defensively present. I would I would probably agree, which you can attribute to the strength thing. Yeah, yeah, and, and then yeah, even taking the strength out of it, just the way he'll he'll play gap against yeah. the player, the way he'll he'll pace that distance and stuff, I think he'll just do be- that better than McDavid. I think yeah. McDavid will be a lot more trying to quickly strip the puck off you in a flashy, Yeah, thing, but that doesn't always work. Does it help, though? McKinnon will block a shot more. The McKinnon has a little more space on the ice with the, the team that's around him? Does that, does that, like, you think that sways the way things end up looking? Because with, I mean, let's, besides Dreisaitl, when people play Edmonton, you, they they're like okay, <laughs> number ninety seven. We got to do our best to s- stop everything he's doing. Where I mean, McKinnon's line, like you can't ignore Landis Scott. You can't ignore Ranton. And those guys will pot a goal easy. You know what I mean? Which kind of opens up the ice a bit more. It does. It does. It's an interesting argument, like in general, just I, yeah. seeing who's seeing who's like is better. I mean, and and to that point too, like that, and that that happens a lot practically where. Like you're saying, they're they're gonna cover McDavid more because mm-hmm. he's got less powerful people on his on the line with him usually. But you know, it it doesn't always it doesn't always play out that way. I think yeah. I think I think the defenses are also gonna recognize that McKinnon's the most the bi- the biggest threat of the three. Yeah, but your point's definitely still, the most your, explosive. Your point still stands where they're definitely gonna be giving McDavid way less. Yeah, room. he's gonna be way more. Uh, uh, swallowed up by double teams, yeah, and things like that for sure. And it's going to be in, super interesting to see the whole career arc of them both because, especially, you got to that's the other thing is McDavid came into the league and was McDavid from the jump. McKinnon took, took a little, little bit, he took he, a couple well, he years had, to stew. He had a nasty freshman year, he had a big sophomore slump, yeah. McKinnon had a monstrous yeah. slump, yeah. uh, as a sophomore and then coming uh, like a year or yeah. two after. That's facts, but he also. Not like obviously people knew about McDavid when he was like fourteen. I mean, he's fucking. Yeah. He was like Crosby. He basically, dude. is the next Crosby's. You know, in terms of legacy. I yeah. Think. Um, he's got to get some cups, but McKinnon's good. Dude, they're both they're, they're both some of my favorite players to watch for sure. But then also, yeah, NHL put out uh, NHL Network put out their top ten goalies because top twenty goalies would just get ridiculous. Mm. But so we got number ten, Freddie Anderson. Number nine, Mark Andre Fleury. Number eight, Bennington. Number seven, John Gibson. Number six, Anton Hudobin. Number five, Tuka Rask. Number four, Carter Hart. Number three, Carey Price. Number two, Connor Hellebuck. And number one, Andre Vasilevsky. And this is where the NHL network confuses me because, like we were saying, it feels like some of the guys on the list, they're taking the career into account. But then you look at a guy, well, I guess it's the fan list, so I apologize for that. It's not the NHL network list. So but actually Anton Hudobin. Sense. Having him at number six, it's like yeah. Well, you know who voted, or who like like those are all Hurricanes fans, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hurricanes and Dallas fans teamed up. And they're like we're getting right. Dobby. I, up I think there. what you're saying is, is this plays more into the recency thing, mm-hmm. less than just the overall side. Yeah, yeah. Like Kudobin's obviously not, and this must be, and it must be more of a of a right now's type of snapshot, I guess. Right? I mean, how would it not be? Yeah, Kudobin's I mean, had some great performances over his, like obviously last year was great. The playoffs was great, but. Before that too, he yeah, he's had great, great. years. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely had great years. And then Mark Andre Fleury being on here over um, 
Oh my God, how Robin Leonard. Yeah, Robin Leonard is interesting. You know what He's I mean? Interesting. Because the team literally chose well, Leonard. Those are all Pittsburgh. Fans. Over, yeah. <laughs> just so these lists are so yeah. fucked. It's just yeah. like like the 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 uh, stipulations, yeah. and the scenarios that put these guys in these these numbered slots. I think that you just gotta ignore the numbers at some point and look at like they are the best ten or whatever. You yeah. Know what I mean, yeah. You can probably compare like the top three or four. Mm-hmm. But after that, it just becomes. It's going to be I, – I am interested to see what the NHL Network's list ends up being because I really don't think Hudobin's going to be on, on that at all. list. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it is, I'm going to be thor- thoroughly confused by Very what their so. uh, stipulations are for getting Like he's right list. behind Tuka Rask. That's what I'm saying. Like how is how – is, How is Carter Hart number four? How is no offense to him. But I mean like, Carter Hart he's nasty. like a legendary year. He's nasty, but it's like – like you're saying career-wise, like, you know what I'm saying? He hasn't – not much proven. Yeah, like – I don't know. I don't know. I'm not not even saying he should be in the top ten, but the top. It is five. odd. It's odd that Carter Hart's right behind Carey Price. Yeah, but two ahead of Kudobin. But Kudobin's ahead of John Gibson. Yeah, yeah. And then why the fuck is Jordan Benson even on this list? <laughs> why is he even on this list? <laughs> the those blue fans are still hype, dude. I'm just gonna, yeah. They're still I'm riding confused. that fucking high, dude. I hate the, I hate lists. <laughs> I hate ranking lists that aren't like just like the, this is the most points in the NHL. You know what I mean? Like just statistics. Josh lists. doesn't take shit to the grocery store. He's like, fuck all that, dude. I couldn't rank him. <laughs> so I just buy whatever my heart feels. <laughs> yeah. on there. I go strictly off the facts, dude. Yeah, but um. Did you see uh, more hockey news? The Kirby Doc and or Dotch and uh, Nick Cousins, the whole this was just a big thing on Twitter. So I guess they're getting some sort of uh, work with the trainers, some sort of like whatever it was, and they show up at eleven thirty to practice, which starts at eleven thirty, and coach basically comes up to him and is like, "Listen, you know, we understand we're trying to set a culture here of like being on time, all this stuff." I'll I'll let you guys come in and do like participate in practice, but it's going to set a bad example. It's going to show that rules can be bent for players who are important, and so I, the they decide they're going to set out a practice. Now people are pissed off online saying like they were first of all really weren't late. They showed up at eleven thirty when practice was starting. They just weren't on the ice yet, and the reason they did that was because they were with the trainers. So people are pissed off like you know. Why are you punishing these guys? But then the other side goes like, I mean, like this happens in sports. You're late to practice. You don't get to practice. They sat in the stands. Like the coach fist bumped them in. Like you can see on video, they're having the talk when they like they fist bump all around. They, they turn and go back. Like it's all good. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. like I'm not pissed, but just like he left it up to them. You guys decide. Are you going to participate, and that's going to be the precedent that's set, or are you going to sit out, and that's going to be the precedent that's set? So I, it just people were real pissed off and kind of like, what's your thoughts? What do you? I think that that is a a classic example in. It's a, a super boring take, but this is the classic example in the necessary professionalism that that coaches and and not executives, but the people who actually are are with these players and get to know these players are trying to instill these these these. Not morals, but these these fucking traits. Yeah, these traits of professionalism mm-hmm. and respect. Build that culture in the locker room. Exactly. It's not just about making these one guys look bad or making these one guys have to put the weight of making these younger guys learn everything on their shoulders. It's mm-hmm. just about following the traditional way you would treat it if it was anyone else, any other time, doing the same exact thing. Yeah, and there's, it's there's a protocol, and it seems like just. It, from, a culture. A, from an outsider's perspective, too, the trainers, they, they probably could have gotten there a little earlier, too. You know what I mean? Because well, if it's something serious, the medical staff is going to go to the coach and be like, oh, by the way, we're going to have to keep him a little longer because of X, Y, and Z. And then coach These guys aren't work. dummies. They have a very, very planned out schedule. You're going to yeah. be here at this time, be with the trainers from this time, this time, and then practice starts at this time. Yeah. That's all planned out. If it's later and that's the trainer's fault, then that's between the players and the trainers and the coaches and the trainers, and they yeah. can work that out. But when you got to show up to practice at 1130 and there's other people who aren't a part of your other schedule or aren't privy to that, and the mm-hmm. and the the assumption of you getting on the ice whenever you want can still be the fucking received notion, yeah, yeah. You're, you're not practicing. Exactly. Do the, so, do the quote right thing. And just the overarching thing is 
is kind of a product of us getting more and more glimpses of behind the scenes just because mm. of the nature of social media. I bet this sort of shit happened all, all the, the time. time. You know what I'm saying? All the like, time. And it's just like, yeah, you don't like you don't get to participate in this hour long skate. Like, so I'm sure they went and you know did the workouts later with and, the team, all that shit. And people want to know how you know it, it's really easy for 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 any athlete or any person to find themselves in a popular light gaining a lot of wealth and become jaded by that and become a fucking dick by that. Yeah. Part of what keeps these people humble throughout their career are moments like that yeah. when they're young and they get told you can't fucking be late. You yeah. can't be a fucking asshole. You don't get special treatment. You don't get special yeah. treatment. So no matter how fucking rich and, and popular they get, they'll remember those moments and they'll hopefully continue to exhibit those exactly. traits and teach that to the fucking next generation. Exactly. And that's how you make good people. Yeah, and that's how... Because the other guys in the team that are like, man, that's, you know, that's their first round pick over there. I'm that's, some fucking... That's what I want to be like, like. He's like, I'm some third liner. Like, if they're not letting him get away with that, they're fucking... I'm getting cut. They're not even... <laughs> they're going to change the key card thing and not right. even let me in the building. And, there's, and let's be very clear, right? Because, and again, you're talking about that's going to be that third liner's reaction. Like, yeah. that's how they treat him. They're going to cut me. Let's be very clear. There's a big difference between that him having that takeaway and him, and him or her, that player... Uh, you know, gaining something out of it, and then like, in, and then like psychological torment, making players fear for their their fucking yeah. careers. There's a big difference yeah. between those two. I just want to be clear about that. Definitely, definitely not the but. same thing. Some people say those are the same thing. And you're fucking yeah. dumb. Yeah, that's all right. I just want to be clear about that. <laughs> <laughs> but see, I have no problem with how it went down. You know, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, just and good on them players. for deciding to, stick, to sit out. Yeah. That's, that's that's what I would hope. That's what I would do. Definitely, if I was in their shoes. I would. I mean, fuck going to practice, dude. Who wants to practice? Like, I, nah, dude. <laughs> I'm just such a fucking rink rat. Like, you, you just want the ice. Fuck time, the dude. look. Yeah, I'm yeah, going yeah. out there and I'm stealing all the pucks. Yeah. <laughs> Taking them all the one end, cutting off half the ice yeah. like his fucking open skate, dude. Exactly. You're fuck going, those you're going full Garner Ice House on him. For real, <laughs> dude. This okay. This shit is wild to me. The whole. I mean, it's awesome, but it's wild. The whole potential divisions for next did, season. Uh, did you get to see the like the list? No, the, the list that may have no, got. No, no, I didn't even see any of that. But so I was just on the whole fucking. Oh, it's from fucking Wish. God yeah. damn, <laughs> one of my least favorite sources in sports. <laughs> just being honest. Um, no, nah, I did see before the whole Canadian U.S. thing. So I guess yeah. this is privy to that. But uh, so the, yeah, they're gonna have a Canadian. This is all. Up in the air. It's very hypothetical, but it's going to be a Canadian division, an East division, a Central division, and a West division. And obviously, Canada's division is going to have Calgary. They just need to read your divisions like this anyway. For, just for good, dude. should be wild. <laughs> but yeah, so Canada's going to have the, uh, the Flames, the Oilers, the Canadians, Senators, Maple Leafs, Canucks, and Jets. No, and that makes sense there. They're all in Canada. That, uh, <laughs> Those are all the Canadian teams. That all checks out. And then in the East... It's going to be the Bruins, the Sabres, the Hurricanes, the Devils, the Islanders, the Rangers, the Flyers, and the Capitals. What you got going on over there, man? Cool. I was trying to be discreet about it. Basically, I, I don't have a Twitter, so I can't open the link. It won't even let you just view the... Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, man. I think it depends on the type of post. Damn, Damn at Jack. <laughs> Damn, fucking. B. But, uh, so, yeah, the Hurricanes going to have some uh, a couple different teams to play. In, uh, or in for in division with the Bruins and uh, a couple of Atlantic teams. Yeah, it's so oh, you think we're gonna we're gonna get the Toronto curse now? Chill. <laughs> we're just gonna Chill. get the shit beat out of us by the Bruins. Dude, we already lost them in the playoffs a couple of times. Chill. Now. It's rough, dude. This Central Division though. Read it out, dude. What they got in the Central? Chicago, Columbus, Detroit, Florida, Nashville, Pittsburgh, the Blues, and the Lightning. That's a very interesting division. Very interesting. That's There's just a lot that's of, the biggest mixed match of the East West right there. For real. I mean, bring St. Louis back over. It was like they were like, all right, so you know how the, the divisions are all kind of fucked or the, the conferences. The yeah. conferences are low-key fucked up. We're going to fix that with this. <laughs> all those OCD people have had for years. Yeah. Like, why is Nashville here? Why is this team here? Just like, oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it all makes sense. Yeah. And then out west, keeping it pretty... Uh, west. Yeah, keep it pretty western with the Ducks, the Coyotes, the Avalanche, the Stars, the Kings, the Wild, the Sharks, and the I got to tell you, it is weird not seeing uh Edmonton in that list. Yeah. Yeah, with all the other teams that are yeah. right there. Yeah, for sure. Like some divisions are just like like the Atlantic division to me and the Pacific division. Those are like some those are like the border ass divisions. Yeah. <laughs> like all those border ass ocean ass teams for real. are on those teams. They and, travel uh, each city by boat. <laughs> it's just faster. Yeah. 
just gotta go. Yeah. Like, they just gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's stupid. All right, dude, but pick, a, pick the division winners, bro. Canadian. Um, well, Canadians have won a cup in like. <laughs> Canadian team has won a cup in how long? But I'm saying like in the Canadian oh, the division. Oh, oh, who's, who's taking win that cup? Who's winning uh, the Canadian division? Uh, Ottawa. Ottawa's winning it. That's a, I'm clowning. Okay. Canucks, dude. Yeah. Canucks or the Flames? Okay. Same probably the Canucks though. That's who I my heart, my heart, and uh, that's literally all I'm going off. Toronto of Toronto gets heart. their shit together, man. They could be so good. Dude, they could, they be, could so be the best good. team. They could be the Patriots of the NHL if they just stop fucking around. I don't the, know what the problem is. The one thing the Patriots did that they don't do is play defense. <laughs> that's true. That's true. But it's not like they haven't had the 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 names on paper. You know, yeah, just fail to execute. I feel like yeah, it's it's a whole thing. Um, <laughs> the East, and why is it the Carolina? And why Hurricanes? is it the Washington Capitals? <laughs> that's a tough division. It is man. mad that's, tough. That's like, like, the most game game. In here like I'm gonna say the easily. Bruins just because I'm yeah. so used to seeing them Such winning their division. Logged like, out of logged out of Bruins game. Someone tell me to fucking remind me. Um. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, probably, yeah, I mean, the Bruins, the Capitals. I mean, low-key, like, it's, you can kind of put the Hurricanes in that discussion now, you know what I mean? Just, like, where the team's at now. But I do think it's probably going to come down to the Bruins or the Capitals, truthfully. Agreed. As a... Just to be as honest. An unbiased to be honest. To be honest. And then in the West, uh, Vegas. Taking Vegas all day, dude? No. Easy. Dude, not Easy. even, even going to throw the, the stars G. in there, dude. No, not nah, that was like lot. Like this year was their chance. <laughs> this is it. This they're, is their window. Yeah, they, psychologically, they're not going to recover this soon. Yeah, you know they're fine. Yeah, they're just scarred. Yeah, it probably will be Vegas. It'd be nice to see Colorado up there, though. It you would know, be so nice. It'd be pretty sick. I mean, Cam Car. Yeah, is going to be back. Like he's <laughs> going to be better. He's going to be. He's not going to be. What is he? 18, 19? Something like that. He's gonna be older than that. He's gonna now. be older than that, bro. Like it's gonna be crazy. Bro can't even drink yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He plays defense. Yeah. He scored like twenty goals. Yeah. This it's crazy. And then Central, dude. Is it gonna be Pittsburgh, or is it gonna be Tampa, dude? Or the St. Louis Blues, I guess. I mean, they've kind of. No, the Blues are fucked. Blues are fucked. Yeah, yeah I think Ryan fucked. O'Reilly, dude. <laughs> I think <laughs> we're, not, we're not even Does sure, he? dude. <laughs> Does, Does he play? For Does them? he know where he's playing next year? Uh, but yeah, we, I I, nah. th- I do think Pittsburgh or Tampa will probably be the probably be the ones. And I yeah, Pittsburgh, I'm Tampa. just saying because of Malkin and Crosby. Like, when you really think about it, anything can happen. Like, but team. when you really think about it, do they really even deserve to? Besides Malkin and Crosby, like, the team around them, do like, they deserve? They've, they've to be? made. I can't remember all of them off the top of my head, but they've. Continue to make those little tiny roster yeah. grabs that yeah. are going to turn into those. Oh yeah, who's the winger they brought in? I forget. I forget. But, but that's what they're going to do. They're going to do that Connor Sherry fucking yeah. Jake Ensel shit. Yeah. They're going to just keep trying to do it until it works. For real. But it's going to be yeah cool to see where all the all the teams end up because sure. I mean those they those divisions do kind of make sense for sure. For <coughs> Earth thing, dude. For <laughs> Earth thing, dude. <laughs> Versus. Versus, dude. It yeah, happened. Dude. It happened. Dude. They got him in the same room. Gucci what and Jeezy. What a wild fucking thing. There's like uh, an absolute, like, I mean, like, you got, like, all the verses have been pretty cool. This one's going to be, like, a bookmark in, like, hip-hop history. Yeah. Yeah. Like, 100%. Like, the verses itself was only as, like, whatever, the, but just the, 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 the series of events that led to this. Like this is such and, a weird thing, and they did it in Magic City, which is like the most really? fam- the most famous Atlanta strip club. Like I had no idea. Yeah, and so, and two obviously very famous Southern artists there, and just, I mean it's just like the whole the whole moment's fucking epic. But then just the clip where Gucci's like, "Yo, we smoking on Pookie Lope Pack tonight. Put that man in the dirt." It, it gives me like fucking, <laughs> it makes my. Neck Dude, cringe. standing up just like eight feet away from the guy, just like, I'll put your friend in the dirt. Send some more. I'll send them back to you the same way in a box. Like, I was just like, everyone's watching like, yo. <laughs> he, yo. Like, like it's not it's not the same, like, uh, scale, but like that really would be like if uh, if if Pac played hit him up right in front of Biggie. For real. It would like, it's the same level of like, Fuck you, type yeah. song. Because he played the, the he played the truth, which the line in there is like, "Go dig your dead homie up." I bet he ain't say shit. Just like it's just like, br- like, and then like, not only did he play it, but like he rapped it 
he performed it right. eight feet away from like the guy. Like there was such real beef behind this, dude. I can't believe. Shouts it out both of them. Shouts out Jeezy for like just being able to muster. And, and you would have to be past it emotionally yeah. to be able to have had that happen, right? You, so it's not like. Do you think it was staged, dude? The whole thing? Because once once Gucci said that, Jeezy had a whole speech, and then that's, I forget what song he played, but the speech led like directly into that song. And then at the end, they performed So Icy together, which is like the most famous song that they had done together right. prior to the beef. Right. And then afterwards, which. They go, they both went to a club together, like, which is crazy. Then at the end of this, they were like, go meet us up at the club. It's COVID. Fuck it. We're in Atlanta. Like, yeah, they're in Atlanta. (laughs) It's, it's, it's staged to the point that they hadn't seen or really talked to each other, but each other's camps are very in the know of what each other's songs are going to be. So they, so they, they're like, yo, he's going, he's going to play the diss. He's going to, he's going to talk about it. And then he's going to be like, yeah, and he's going to, and he's going to do this. He goes, what if y'all do so I see at the end? And he's like, all right, I'll, like, do, I'll, I'll it, do it. Because I think in like the speech after, Jeezy had said like he called Gucci and was like offered the whole thing because um, I think it was originally maybe it was supposed to be somebody else. It was. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But so he called, uh, he called Gucci and I think Gucci was like, listen, if I do this, like – I'm talking about it all, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're not just going to not address, like, this elephant in the room. And he was like, all right. And then Gucci came. <laughs> like, I wonder if he told him, like, we're, I'm going to play the song, but then got out there and was like, got real disrespectful. And Jeezy was like, word? Like, <laughs> it's crazy, man. He's like, you know we still got to do So Icy, right? <laughs> uh, I hope it wasn't set up, because that would be real fucked up on uh, Jeezy's part, though, if you kind of, like, exploit the memory of your dead friend. For sure, for the moment on that level, like, but, on, but again, right? it also depends on it depends on the and again that that's a true staple and like we're not privy to the context of how everyone feels about it. Yeah, because so so if Jeezy's okay with that going <laughs> down, if it's somewhat staged or whatever, or he had to have been somewhat okay with it because it happened and no repercussions came from it. Yeah, you know, supposedly. So like, someone's trying to talk to you. Over it. It's a fucking. It's a fucking AI. He said maybe. I know it's an AI, AI, but still, he's got gifts for you, son. You just do a quick puzzle. You get some gifts. I ain't doing all that. I gotta get this cold. We'll keep mine cold. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Oil. Anything about oil, bitch? You cooking? You cooking? Um, killed my father. Lost my. (laughs) But getting them together. Killed my father, man. (laughs) 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 Fucked fucked up my whole thing. (laughs) Fucked up the whole thing. Uh, but yeah, Jeezy stupid. Gucci, staged, exploiting the memory of a past friend. He, he would have had he, the families that are good with Jeezy. Jeezy's, you know, he's taking care of that family. Mm-hmm. Every there would have been conversations. Like everyone who would who not would have been okay with it would had was spoken to. Yeah. So if there's, you know, I think that kind of deads that part of it or that potential that he was exploiting it without getting everyone's permission. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully. Uh, for you real. will hope. Yeah, yeah for real. You nah, will hope. You will hope. <clears throat> but shouts out to that definitely a crazy super fucked up if not yeah <laughs> crazy moment and uh he's dropping dude. an album too I think, so, I think you're right yeah so that means you know promo yeah uh, that's just, I just thought about this back on to a little sports do you see Pennsylvania passed a, I guess it's a law where all athletes have to wear masks while playing the sport and this goes from high school to the pro level like so everything no professional Home games will be held in in, in Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah, but season. I'm just waiting to see. Like, I want to watch the Pittsburgh Steelers play today, just to see if they're at home, just to see if they're I all bet you like just, masked it's the same up, way. Like that? the same way, there's like the fucking pseudo science behind. Oh, you can you wear a mask when you go into the host stand of a restaurant, and then you can take them off when you all sit down together. They're gonna like apply that same logic to football and go. Oh, well, they're wearing they're wearing they on the have sidelines. A, you, there's literally a penalty called face masking. So like they're they have masks. It's fine. He's like, dude, those like, are just bars. Like, nah, dude, but COVID it can't fit through with the. There's hike. only X percent of COVID <laughs> things can actually get through the plastic of yeah. them because the way it's just enough 
surface area that covers we, the mouth. We've actually been training with our players to alter all their breathing and techniques. So, and so, so due actually, to this, we've decided it can be an exception to this rule and we the money. <laughs> we've actually changed it. No pads. Actually, we're just going to have everyone wear T-shirts and basketball shorts. We're just going to go at it that way, dude. Only in Pennsylvania, though. Still Sports wearing sport. the helmets. Yeah. Gotta wear the Still helmets. wearing the helmets. <laughs> Concussions and COVID. We gotta stop that. Beautiful stuff, dude. Um, shouts out the rap game. Shouts out just, the rap game. That's just where dude. that ends up. Shouts out the Raptors. Not playing. So, in all right, Canada. yeah. While we're talking, and I meant to talk Some about Canadian this division stuff during the during the division thing. This yep. is this is low key racist. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna throw that out there. Like, what the fuck is going on? What is going on? Can, what Canada, is going on? Canada told the Raptors, you ain't Stay playing in, Florida. in Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? But we're going to have a whole division of NHL teams, a bunch of them who are residents in the United States. This has to be some sort, like legitimately, it has to be some sort of like none of the NBA players are, are Canadian citizens. That's probably. That's got to be it. Well, it's just some bullshit know. law thing where they're do, not letting people cross the border. Do you think they're all the like work visas for the Raptors A hundred percent. I guess you might be right. I mean, you think the motherfuckers like they have places in Toronto? I don't think yeah. being a a, a, a property condo owners, owner or yeah. a property owner is prohibited if you're not a citizen. Yeah. But you can't. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but you can show up for. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't. I don't think uh, that's got to be it. There's what other reason would they disallow X number of people? We're talking because we're talking about a whole, whole bunch of teams uh, for the NHL yeah. being di- uh, divided a division. Divided into just the country. Yep. Hub together, play together. And then you're going to disallow one team because of what? My Citizenship? Only, my only guess would be just because there's no other Canadian basketball teams, are there? No, there's not. So, like, that would be my only thing is, like, they're like, we're only allowing this to happen because we're Canadian, we love hockey. And there's also, like, seven teams up here in Canada. So. And it's able to make a division. They just make, like, <laughs> but you, the but Toronto me, play, like, the practice squad for all their 82 games. Like, it's just, <laughs> but They get to the playoffs is the biggest asterisk ever. So, right. There's no other Canadian yeah. basketball teams. But are we saying that the Raptors failed to make Canada and Toronto any, and the NBA any money? No, they make a lot, a lot of money. So what is the disconnect? I just don't get it. I don't. The biggest confusing thing to me is the, the Florida part. Like why? Because they're already there, bro. That's, yeah, all the players are already down in Miami, just chilling. Well, they, and they were for the. Were they not in the playoffs? They were. I'm pretty sure they were. For, they were for the bubble. Were they Damn, not? They just told him, "Hey, move right back into that hotel, bro." <laughs> said, you like, gotta log back in. That's Disney. why it's fucking racist. They said, "Hey, yo, Disney, let him right back into that, that hotel." Shit is fucking. It's just. It's just weird. It, it, to me, at the end of the day, to me, it just stands out as some, like, we just prefer hockey over basketball. Fuck you. Like, that's, <laughs> how, like how does it not look like that? They really don't, they don't. I mean, if there were more basketball teams, if there was even, like, three or four basketball teams in Canada and they were like, nah, like, I'd be more on your side. It's just the fact that there's only one, I'm like. But here's, here's what I'm telling you. Because what the NBA hasn't said they're going to do, unless I'm, unless I'm totally wrong. Are they going to bubble for the regular season? I see. That's, I haven't heard anything about any of it. Let's just say they're not. Let's just say that they're not mm-hmm. because it hasn't come out that they officially are. Yeah. Just like the the NFL's not. Yeah. There's no other real context to assume they will. So let's say they're not going to bubble. At least if they are, they're not going to bubble just like one or two places. Let's also pretend that there's more NBA basketball teams. Mm-hmm. If so, what you're telling me, if there was more NBA basketball teams. But there wasn't a bubble. They would let a bunch of motherfuckers come willy nilly to different arenas and play because it's hot. I don't think they would let that happen. Yeah. But but they're also not gonna, or they wouldn't want that to happen. Mm-hmm. But they're also they can't dictate what the entire league does yeah. because of X number of teams. I don't know. It's just it just seems weird. It just seems super super weird. Super it has weird. to be a decision a citizenship thing. It has to be. Probably, and, but if that's the case, that's also fucking stupid. Because we're yeah. talking again, you're talking about like 20 something people, 20 guys. Yeah. A, whole, yeah. a whole team would be like 40, 50, 60 plus, whatever, yeah. all the trainers, everybody. But like actual athletes, five people are on the court at yeah. once. Yeah. Like, what the, and they play most of the game. Like, yeah. What the fuck is going on? Yeah. I'm just, it's, it's just very weird. Super weird. Really, the whole bubble thing in general, because like you're looking at, like you're saying, football, they're kind of making it work. Like, guys are missing games because they're testing positive and all that. Could be worse. But football's got such a deep well 
of roster to pull from. Like they have a 53 mm. man active roster, and then you have your uh, practice squad like below that. It'd be harder to bubble that too. Harder to bubble that, but I'm saying like if making it so they can travel around if someone gets sick, like you have a next man up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With NHL, I mean, they have like what three extra guys? You have yeah. three people test positive. Like Maybe we have some. E. We're gonna have small issue, private call ups. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then that and then, you know, their practice squad is all in the AHL and everything. That's more travel that they would have to do and probably quarantine that here. fly has been frustrating this whole time. The fly's about a Mike Pence dude. <laughs> <laughs> assholes. But yeah, no, so it's, it's gonna be I don't like it's uh, it's weird. The I'm, NBA sees I don't know what they're doing. It's weird. I don't know I don't know what's going on anymore. But, what's going on with Nintendo, bro? Oh, uh, this uh, uh I was watching, you know, the esports talk guy talked about this, and I kind of looked further into it. But so Nintendo, the Smash Brothers, Super Smash Brothers series, that apparently Super Smash Brothers Melee, which is on the GameCube, is still as popular, if not a bit more popular than uh, what's the newest one that came out on Switch? Exactly. It's like, it, but I've heard it's just it's ultimate. Just, yeah, it's just not good. And so this uh, fan third party guy creates an online system basically an emulator that allows the Super Smash Brothers Melee tournaments to be held online because mm. obviously it's GameCube only. All their tournaments were LAN. Like you, right, had, you had, that's to. Had, had to be how it was. And uh, Nintendo has come out and has shut down the biggest, I think it's called Big House Media or Big House Entertainment, but they hold the biggest Smash Brothers tournaments. Cease and desist of them said, you know, you can't hold these tournaments because of this third-party software and their reasoning being that it's um, their shit. Well, the, well, it's they're saying like you have to use a pirated copy of the game, and it's like no, 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 no. Like, will the emulator work with a pirated copy of the game? Sure, just because that's how the like it has the right game files. But all it is is like it's editing some ROM files, and then it allows you to interact online. And they said it works better. That system works better than Ultimate System on the Switch. Just like it's guys are playing in California and Florida with almost no lag, like none of that shit. And it's just Nintendo was like, fuck all that. Like they just like they looked at their whole fan base and were like, fuck all that. And you know? that's where they fucked up. And that's where they Nintendo kind of has a track record of this. No, just they've always fucked in general, up. Like they have never. It, to me, there's two sides of the coin. I'd be, I'd be hypocritical to say that Nintendo is not within their every bit of right to do that. Yeah. It's the same thing with the with the music sh copyright shit at the end of the day, whether it's whether they're citing this reason or that reason. You can't just take someone else's thing and go, I'm going to go. Whether the guy's killing money-wise yeah, yeah, yeah. or you can't just, I'm going to take something someone else did without their permission, their, their strict permission, yeah. and just make money and make a, make a profitable organization off of it. You can't just do that. Yeah. At the same time, Nintendo needs to recognize what's going on and what it's doing for their game and the longevity of their game and bring those people who are capable of doing that into their shit yeah. and then and then officialize it, making it official. Yeah. That's what they need to do. They need to stop fucking around and being so one sided. Yeah. In, apparent, in the past they had they tried to make it where people couldn't even stream their games. Which is which is they dumb. were they were they were one of the you know people that came back up recently with the DMCA stuff where like, well technically even playing the video game's not your property. Like that thing. Nintendo right. tried that and I think might have set the precedent. They might have been that court case might have set the precedent for allowing streamers. I think it was part to of it. Grow to where they are today to be able to play those games and just killing off that whole community, which is essentially what they're doing. Nintendo's I don't, just been. Make sense. I've been a, a huge opponent of Nintendo's for a while. It's now. like they. It's like they. Come I up think with they're great, so awful. They come up with great intellectual property, like cool shit, and then it's just they like, fail to capitalize. Yeah, they're on like it. fuck you to their fans, and I wonder. If it's kind of like how we've talked about with Cold War Warzone, how they're going to like, we're going to make these weapons the best, potentially, so you have to buy this game, grind them here. Are, is Nintendo doing this? Because they're like, fuck you, buy the new shit where you can't, like, there, you can play online on yeah. our servers. and Exactly. It's just such a such a shitty business move. I mean, buy buy that shit. Just, it's already made. It's already working. It's Purchase a good it and make example, money off of it. A good example is what the, not the NHL specifically, but what, what uh, brands did with these unofficial stats guys and girls who fucking yeah. were making websites and you know some of them were getting hit with you know because they were publicizing contracts or whatever legalities yeah, go yeah. into that but 
people who were saying they were copyright and whatever, a lot of those people end up getting picked up by teams. Yeah. They get picked up by the league and they get their shit legitimate yeah. and they fucking, you know, that's the right way to treat that stuff. You should, you, you prevent the pirating aspect, pirating just in general of the profit being yeah. taken from you, but you capitalize on it in a way that can help benefit that person, exactly. hopefully, and you as well as the business. Everyone can exactly. stand to win when that happens. Like I was in the story, I was reading this guy. Like apparently, because the uh, app is called Slippy that mm. emulates everything. He mm. quit his job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he quit like his Slippy job. Toad? Huh? Like Slippy Toad? Slippy Toad? I don't know. Is is the logo a frog? I could not tell you. Fucking I mean, useless. <laughs> bro. Useless. Man. But so he t- he quit his job. Took six months. Built this from scratch all on his own. And then, like, if you're Nintendo, like you're saying, you gotta recognize the passion, the hard hire work. Hire this guy. Just let him let him come fix your Smash Brothers Ultimate. I'm sure there's some ego bullshit in those offices where they're like, he can't do my job better. But he just fuck like hire this dude. Just let him run the melee and stuff. Is it a frog? Let's go, nice. dude. It's a frog. Big brain, five head, dumbass. But yeah, just fucking yeah. Give Star him a job, Fox dude. Ass. Give him a job. Do like yeah, the FBI. Man, de- you get hacked, you fucking hire him. There's right? definitely some ego shit, but that's on the responsibility of the of the. Of the senior person ahead of them, because yeah. that that person, that's the person who like if you're like a if you're, if you're like a CEO, big top thing, and all you do is make decisions, you need to be in tune with your fucking culture. You need yeah. to be in tune of the personalities that are that are in charge of your production shit. Because if you don't put the right people in charge of that shit, everything else is fucked. Yeah, everything else is ass. You need to be looking at who can fucking mm-hmm. you your shit. Establish a culture, dude. You got <laughs> it's saying. Dude. Word to the Blackhawks. Damn. <laughs> Let him run Nintendo. No. <laughs> did we do it, man? I think we fucking did it. Did we do it? Dylan, what do you got, man? Jacob. Excellent. Where, <laughs> where can they find us? Did you want to talk to us where can about they, some, you know, Nintendo? Where can they get us geolocation wise? Geolocation. Josh's address whoa, is. Whoa. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but I know. Hit us up at Talking Sauce Pod. No underscore. Respect the underscore. Stay respecting it. If you're listening to this, check out the YouTube. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Scrum every Wednesday. Check it out. Um, all the if you're watching, it's on Spotify and shit. Uh, you can get me at jcob, J-A-Y underscore C-O-B-B-B, Josh. You can get me at Teebs. You can find me on RuneScape at Teebs, C-A-B. You can get me on Xbox. You can get me on PC. You can find me everything on Teebs, C-A-B, Z-Z. Dylan. Find me on Reddit at U, T-Bags, you mum, 69420, lowercase x, capital X. That's U slash T-Bags, you mum, M-U-M, 69420, lowercase x, capital X. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah.